Bachelorette season 13, and we got ourselves a daily double on our hands this week. You know what? It's af it's officially summer. Mm -hmm. The days are getting longer. Yeah. Days are getting hotter. <laughs> what do I want to do? <laughs> Just as summer is approaching, I want to spend four hours inside <laughs> watching the most exciting television exactly. I have ever seen. Nothing says summer like sitting inside <laughs> and watching four hours of Bachelor Watching Rap seven Band. dudes just get their <laughs> their hearts broken. Yeah, dude. Well, and before we get into it, can I just say, how in the hell? After two episodes this week, did Adam and Matt survive? Uh, are Honestly, you kidding? I don't know. I do want the question answered, though. Is Adam Jr. still in the world? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the difference... Can she yeah. eliminate Adam but keep AJ around? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I, I think it's something we'll find out those, soon. Those are some of the questions we're going to dive into. Does AJ have a different hometown? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, but of course, in case you didn't know, we're two brothers to break. Where every week we break down the who's, what's, if, ands, or what's of Batch and Batch Nation. So let's dive in. So we begin Tuesday's episode the same way that we ended Monday's episode. Right. The same way that we started Monday's episode. Okay. And that's with Lee and Kenny. Huh. So it seems like this thing might be something we should talk about. <laughs> well, I, I do know that this is something that, uh, We've been getting a lot of people asking our opinions mm -hmm. on. Well, not just people. I mean, we're talking like institutions of yeah. higher learning. <laughs> we're right. talking major industries, yeah. <laughs> media, uh, TMZ's uh, reaching out. Yes, yeah. thank you. ABC's yeah. reaching out. Uh, two bros is a brick. What are your thoughts on this? Honestly, I think we crashed Gmail at one point. Yeah. With the, with the <laughs> amount of requests yeah, we were getting. That's right. Inbox is full. Can't respond <laughs> at the moment. Uh, but yeah, man, this whole Lee and Kenny thing really has been bubbling up for a while. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's the way we ended, you know, last week's episode even. Right. So, I mean, they've been dragging this thing out forever. Before we get to the major annoyance, can I throw a minor annoyance out there? Yeah. Uh, I'm not a biologist. Uh, I'm not even really that familiar with where certain species live. Mm -hmm. But I do know I've watched Planet Earth. <laughs> and I don't remember them ever saying that snakes live north of, let's say, I don't know, Seattle, basically. <laughs> I don't think they live in cold weather climates, and we saw, like, a 7,000 insert right. shots of snakes That's going true. around. That's true. Well, unless that snake is named Lee. Right, 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 that's the yeah. only snake that is in <laughs> yeah. Scandinavian countries. Yeah, but uh, this old Lee and Kenny thing, man, like, uh, God, I, I just gotta say, you know, one thing that makes this whole Lee and Kenny thing so bad is that, well, A, I mean, Lee just sucks yeah. for a number of reasons. But one reason in particular that I think he sucks is that he plays this villain role and he thinks that he is doing such a good job of it, but right. in reality, he just sucks at it. It's kind of the same way that, like, you know, an actor in a movie who's clearly a terrible actor, you can tell that they just think that they're crushing it. He's just, he's just blowing oh, right, it. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. Yeah. Well, it's funny you bring up actor because I, people might not know this about me, I lived in LA for hmm. a year. Uh, but when I would go out for like lunches and brunches, I would see people who say that they are in show business. Right. Usually people who are like agents or models and they present themselves one way, mm -hmm. but you can clearly tell that they are not of that way. Mm -hmm. Like they're leaving a pancake house and be like, you son of a bitch, I'm going to be back here in a week. <laughs> right. And it's like, you're small time. Right. You shouldn't be doing this. Right. And right. I feel like that's very much Lee with racism. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Small so. Small races? I guess so, man. Um, and if, yeah, of course we got to talk about the racial right. uh, elements of this whole thing. And you know, it, it takes me back to when this season started. And you and I applauded ABC for approaching racial issues head on. Right. Right? With racial being, you know, a, a black bachelorette and all the, you know, things that come with that. And it's like, you know, to have this situation unfold the way that they do, it almost makes me feel like they're making a mockery out of the whole racial right, issues right. and like they're trying to create some weird like, you know, melodrama out of it for everybody at home. And it's right. just, I don't know, it's funny. Gross, honestly. It, it really is. And you know, I'm gonna get dark here for a second. But there are a few, there have been in the news these lone shooters who claim allegiance to ISIS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I feel like that's what Lee's doing with like the tortured history of racism in this country. Mm -hmm. He, like we said, is very small time. Right. He's not to be taken seriously. He's a minor annoyance. But since he's attaching himself to these like really traumatic ideals that have haunted US history, then it seems like he has more gravitas than he actually does. Yeah. But really. He's like 5'7". Right. <laughs> yeah. I think you should treat his racism like it falls short of riding most rides at Disneyland. Mm -hmm. Like, it just shouldn't be taken seriously. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you 
forget to mention too, uh, this is the guy that works out in cowboy boots. So, like, <laughs> right then and there. He is a joke. Yeah. He's an absolute joke. All right, so in the first episode, it marked the most anticipated one-on-one -on -one of the season so mm -hmm. far, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not talking about Jack Stone. <laughs> I am talking about <laughs> Brian, Brian right. who won the first impression rose. Yeah. Uh, hadn't spent much time with Rachel, but Rachel mm -hmm. seems to be really into him. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to get to see, does this physical connection also equal an emotional connection? Right. So we start off 187 feet in the air, right? Mm -hmm. They're at the top of this long distance ski jump thing. Uh, and instead of skiing down it, they're total pussies. <laughs> and decide to rappel down it on like a mountain climbing rope yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. And... Things get steamy. That's right. It might have been cold on the mountain, but, uh, man, things got hot mighty quick between <laughs> Rachel and Ryan. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, God, this was, you know, this was a date that, um, I don't know, pretty much they spent the entirety of just making out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because Rachel went in with sort of this, like, roadmap in her head of, like, okay, I know the physical connection's there, but I gotta see if there's anything emotionally, spiritually, <laughs> mentally. Yeah. I didn't see anything. Right, you think she got some answers there? I, I mean, think she kind of ditched that plan Yeah, from I, second one. I think you're right, but that brings up the real problem that I think at least we see with their mm -hmm. relationship. Right. Is that, you know, Rachel keeps saying, I think this relationship might be too good to be true. And he's like, well, why is it too good to be true? Don't you believe in fairy tales? Which we'll get to in a sec. But like, when you think about it, you know, obviously they got that physical chemistry. That's great. We yeah. know that. Yeah. But have they ever really had any conversation of substance at all in their time together. No, and I will yeah. I will give Rachel credit. It seems like she was trying to pry and get him to open up about his experiences with love. Mm -hmm. But quite honestly, as someone who has had to fake it when talking about experiences <laughs> they haven't had vis-a-vis -vis women, uh -huh. maybe when I was in my early teens <laughs> and 20s, yeah. I, I, it felt like Brian was kind of doing the same thing. Yeah. Like, you know, when you were 14, yeah. you haven't, like, felt anyone up yet. You'd be right. Like, yeah, too, I totally, like, grabbed so her. So great. Yeah. Grabbed her, like, friggin' boo. <laughs> and then that's how I feel like Brian's talking about with love. Like, he's like, yeah, like, I felt like I had it, but then I didn't. And then it just, he's talking in such, like, a vague vocabulary that makes me think, like, he hasn't really experienced it in a way that's, like, relevant. You're right. Really. Well, and he has all these bullet points of such a great, you know, catch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, when you look at it, you know, he's 37 years old, mm. and, you know, he's got, like I said, a great job, right. you know, uh, I guess good-looking dude, but, like, I mean, if that's the case, like, why is it that he doesn't have right. this experience, you know, in right. the love department, right? He's never been married. Yeah. He, I don't think... Think has been in the military. Yeah, uh, I just can't no think kids. of a reason. No kids. I can't think of a reason why he's had to take such like a like an extended pause from dating and like right. his this is his first time back. Yeah, it's it's just something doesn't seem right. But yeah. I gotta say the biggest red flag mm. you talked about it earlier. He still believes in fairy tales. <laughs> he's talking about this love like no 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 it is a fairy tale. Right. I swear to God it is right. a fairy tale. Yeah, and something makes me think that like. If he got his tooth knocked out during some sort of competition, <laughs> that he would go uh, to sleep at night at the bachelor mansion and put a tooth in his pillow. <laughs> I'm just gonna see, you know, just see what happens, you know? Oh, you know what? They're in Norway right now. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't surprise me if he's like, hey, you know what? While we're north here, do you mind if we stop by the North Pole real quick? <laughs> I gotta say what up to my buddy Santa. I got, you know, got my Christmas list now, man. Just went slip it in the inbox real fast. Save a buck or two on yeah. postage. <laughs> That's right. I don't know, man, but uh, I think that there's some things about him that we don't know and some things about him that Rachel doesn't know. And uh, I think it's gonna come to a head eventually. Yeah, it's a, it's a stark red flag for me. So with two episodes this week, we had a lot, and I mean a lot, of departures. This was like the Red Wedding of The Bachelor. Yeah, it really was, dude. Some fan favorites left. Yeah. Some people you didn't see coming. God, I mean, really, there were some big time shockers in these two episodes. It was a bloodbath. <laughs> yeah, it was a bloodbath. Uh, but for the sake of time, we felt like a good way to approach this would be to do a little segment we're going to call... In memoriam. Right. So just imagine we have some, like, uh, Sarah McLaughlin playing in the background, or Sarah Bareilles, or really any Sarah singer-songwriter <laughs> playing in the background. Right. Whichever you choose. Right. Pull Which up Spotify, type in Sarah, whatever's the first name that comes exactly. up. Exactly. Uh, so we're going to throw out a name, we'll say first word that pops into our head, right. okay. uh, and then we'll we'll go through all of them. All right. So Hit me. I'm going to kick it off first with Jack Stone. Creepy. Next. 
Uh, all right, yeah. Someone we didn't really see going home this week. Will. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. That was that was abrupt. That was abrupt. Mm, good word. Okay. That was abrupt for sure. Um, Josiah. You know what? As the weeks went on, thought he had a very inspiring story, but I gotta say, corny. Yeah. Kind of just a corny dude. Yeah. Not really all that self-aware. Yeah. I thought he had a certain. Well, we got. We got. We have no time. We got to keep going. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. Music's played over. Yeah, the sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. Uh, Alex. Oh man. Near and dear to our hearts. That's the, yes. That that one is a big time mistake. Yes, and we're gonna figure out what mistake is in Russian, and we're gonna get back to you on that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, let's see, who do we got? Who do we got? Uh, sorry. Oh, Anthony. Anthony. Okay. This one's a little bit of a wordplay, so strap in. <laughs> Sharp. <laughs> oh, it... Sharp dresser. Yeah. <laughs> He got that fellowship uh, from Northwestern, so he's a bright guy. Yeah. Uh, but also a sharp head. <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure, man. That so, is a sharp head. R.I.P. hit the uh, golf pencil of the group, <laughs> Anthony. Oh, man. Uh, all right, now, Ken. Oh, man. Uh, the uh, tearjerker of the episode. Right, yeah, the tearjerker <laughs> of the episode. Uh, I think that uh, in a lot of ways, Rachel just tapped out on that one, right? Very, yeah. I'm saying tapped, man. Yeah, she, uh, I think she she responded to his wrestler background and she was like, hey, you know what? I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> um, last but not least, Lee. Okay, so I was struggling not to bring this up in the first part of the episode. Uh, but to me, he's methane. <laughs> now, why is he methane? Because he's poisonous to the environment. He's technically a greenhouse gas. He's attached to climate change, but really, it's in a cow's fart. Yeah, <laughs> he stinks. He is a cow's <laughs> fart, yeah, really. When it stinks. all comes down to it, he is coming out of the butt of a cow. <laughs> and that's how we really should be focusing on when we talk about it. R.I.P. to all of you. <laughs> yes. Fallen men. Yes. All right, so before we begin the Eric segment, Rachel was telling us all episode how important honesty is to her. Mm -hmm. So I think we should reciprocate that sentiment with our fans and let them know we don't really have much to say about Eric. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, he got a date and we're talking about it afterwards and kind of just like, what happened again? What? Yeah, exactly. Well, what? listen, if we're not, if we're not anything, I'm sure that's how that uh, expression goes, <laughs> we're professionals. Okay? That's right, yeah. So we're going to fill three to four minutes yeah. of a segment about Eric. It might not be totally 100% <laughs> pinpoint accuracy about the date, but hey, yeah. we're going to give it our all. That's right. Uh, hey, so... we filled up an, a minute just talking about <laughs> how we're going to talk about it. <laughs> That's right, yeah. We only got two more minutes to go. <laughs> all right. Uh, so just as a reminder, uh, the date takes place in Copenhagen, mm. uh, where they have a nice little uh, cruise on the canal. Uh, oh, right, because I forgot. I thought they were in Amsterdam, and I was yeah. like, hey, you think yeah. they're going to no. go smoke weed? Turns yeah. out I'm not even in the right country. <laughs> Let alone the right yeah, city. That's right. Uh, no, it's Copenhagen. Yeah. Uh, go for a little cruise down the canal, and then a nice little uh, hot tub, uh, which actually that was that was pretty dope. That dope. was, dope. That was pretty again, dope. honestly, that was dope. Yeah, that was dope. <laughs> uh, and then they go to uh, a theme park because nothing says fine dining like a theme park, right? I or mean, nighttime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, sunset, and let's uh, let's jet on over to the theme park. <laughs> get yeah. there right in time. Get a little burger and fries. Yeah, which I that. actually took umbrage with because the best restaurant for the last six years is in Copenhagen, mm -hmm. and she's taking him basically to the food court. <laughs> I gotta think that if I'm Eric, I'm thinking, oh shit, she's not taking this very seriously. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. You ever been to uh, uh, Pizza Planet at uh, Disneyland? Pretty, it's pretty in, dope. It's a real place. Yeah. Okay, because I've seen dope. Toy Story and I know they go there. Yeah, I, and I gotta say, of all the cartoon pizzas, theirs look the best. Yeah, and I'm a sh I'm a very discerning cartoon pizza critic. <laughs> I will say theirs look the best. Does it? It holds up. up? Man. Okay, it holds up. Uh, right. It is true to form. That's okay. for sure. Does it come with little green aliens? <laughs> Clutching it? I, I I think they're there. I, okay. I don't really remember. Uh, but anyways, uh, Eric and Rachel have themselves a little talk, and uh, it, I mean. It really does, for whatever reason, look like, you know, Eric's becoming a front runner, and uh, Rachel seems to certainly take a liking to him, uh, at least way more than she took a liking to any of the other black dudes on this show, because yeah. he's the last one left. Yeah, and she gave Will such a hard time about him having a dating history that is right. mostly made up of white women. Yeah. 
It seemed like that really turned her off. Right. Yeah. And no, yet, exactly. Five out of the last six guys are white. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, Although Colombian is that white? Yeah. I don't Latino. Know. Four and a half. Yeah. Okay. Four and a half guys. <laughs> Four and a half guys are left. Uh, so uh, we'll see what it means for Eric going forward. Uh, but I think, I mean, I think he's positioning himself to be Ooh. at least top four. Can I have the last word? Yeah. Are we almost at three, four minutes? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, he, I really like that with his button-ups, he goes all the way up. I know I'm not doing that right, right now, but that's typically right. my way of, of approaching the button-up thing. I know you're not crazy about it. I style. think he could improve in the style department, but... Listen, what do got, I know? I'm more of a denim vest. <laughs> he's got a great <laughs> canvas to work with. He's, yeah. a, he's a personal trainer. Yeah. He's got a good bod. Yeah. Uh, pause. Is that the, still the cool term to say? <laughs> yeah, that's the cool term, yeah. <laughs> yeah. After Pride Weekend, is that still the cool term to say? <laughs> it's in right now, that's right. But of course, it would not be a Two Bros of Some Brick recap without the Two Bros of Some Brick stat of the night! Alright, now this week we're going to imagine again Sarah McLaughlin or Sarah Bareilles in <laughs> the background. Um, so, I think we touched on this in the beginning. One of the most unexpected things that come out of this four hours was the fact that Matt the guy oh, who dressed Jesus. up as a penguin to hide his pathetic bald spot on night one is still around. <laughs> over <laughs> Josiah, Alex, Anthony. Yeah. I mean, full blown. Over those dudes. Scholars and uh, Ellen superstars. Right. Is what she chose this bald piece of shit over. <laughs> but yeah. we did some research. Yeah. At the two bros and some brick <laughs> research lab. That's right. Got on the case. And we found out that Antarctica, where the penguins live, Mm -hmm. Live in a year-round temperature on an average of negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Which also just so happens to be the chance we gave Matt of making it this far. <laughs> negative 58% yeah. chance of making it this far. Absolutely, dude. As far as this season is concerned, that beats out DeMario having a girlfriend that shows up yeah, on TV. Uh, Alex going out this week. Any of the other shockers, this is the biggest shocker this season. Beyond just the Bachelorette, I think this tops uh, Leicester City winning <laughs> with the 5,001 odds yeah. a year ago. Yeah. This beats uh, Cavs coming back 3-1. to one. <laughs> This beats the Chicago Cubs coming back 3-1. to one. This might be the biggest shocker of the decade. Yeah, honestly, this I can't believe this happened. I, I uh, Especially with Alex still on the table in that final road ceremony. Blows my mind. Like, how blows the my mind. fuck are you keeping this guy Blows around? my mind. I guess he's winning at this point because, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, man. I don't uh, know. We have to consider it now. I don't know. Anyways, we're going to wrap this thing up. So thank you very much for joining us for yet another week of Bachelorette craziness. Uh, if you want more, you can go ahead and follow us on Instagram. Yes. That's at 2 Bros Brick. As, you know what? I, we've seen a downturn in the amount of likes we get. On the, <laughs> and by we, I mean me. <laughs> and it's really hurting our my feelings. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So Double guys, tap. Smash the like button. All it takes is two little taps. And you're gonna make our day. Your like history is That's not right. the the Metropolitan Museum of Art. You're not some <laughs> master curator, okay? Just toss us a like, it makes us feel good. That's right. And with that, we are saying adios, y'all. Peace.